We're going to have a look at some questions that will help us become more comfortable and fluent with complex arithmetic. Now, arithmetic of complex numbers, thankfully, takes a lot of the concepts and the principles that we know from regular old arithmetic. But as we've seen, you have to take extra special care because these square roots of negative numbers introduce lots of extra places where um, errors can creep in and where the numbers don't always behave like they are used to when we have real numbers. So let's start off with some pretty basic ones and then these questions will increase in complexity. See what I did there? Sorry, that's a terrible joke. All right, we'll start with this first one which is really just about um, expanding some brackets, so distributing um, factors and then collecting like terms. So let's begin by having a look at what we can do with the brackets out at the front and the uh, second pair as well. 4 minus 2i, uh, there's nothing out the front of that, nothing to distribute, so I'm just going to write that as 4 minus 2i. But then as soon as I look over to this second binomial over here, 3 minus 7i is two terms, binomial, um, I notice that there's this minus 1 factor that needs to distribute to everything inside the brackets. So I'm going to do this very slowly, one step at a time, because these are less familiar terms to be working with. I'll do that minus 3, and then I've got that plus 7i, and then that's done. From here, I just take my real components, I collect them just like I would do with like algebraic terms and then I do the same with my imaginary components. So I've got 4 take away 3 which gives me 1 and then negative 2i there and 7i so they combine to give me 5i. So Thankfully, addition and subtraction are the things that are most similar to our regular old uh, arithmetic, so I, nothing too uh, dramatic there. Now here we've got a, a couple of different things that involve multiplication, which is a little more intense, and so we need to think carefully about these, and I'm also going to show you there's of course more than one way to go about these, especially as you're learning them at the beginning. So to start with, we'll have a look at G and then we'll move on to H. 2 plus I or cubed, one of the um, sort of instinctive ways to think about this is 2 plus I multiplied by 2 plus I multiply by 2 plus i, and uh, therefore that second one there, I can write that as squared because this is much more comfortable for me to deal with. Now, you're going to see this is going to take a fair amount of work to expand, so when I go ahead and work out this second term here, 2 plus i all squared, you're going to be squaring um, binomials uh, like this because every complex number um, is binomial sort of by definition. You're going to be doing this a lot, so you better get comfortable with it, right? In this case, my a plus b all squared will be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. What does that mean here? Well, here comes my a squared, if I call this my a and this my b. There's a squared. Um, for reasons that are going to become clear in a second, I'm going to do the b squared next, and then I'll do the 2ab at the end. b squared in this case will be i squared, and then I'm going to add 2ab, which in this case is 2 times 2 times i, so I'm going to get 4 I. Now at this point you might realize why I decided to put a squared and b squared together rather than putting the 2ab in between. Because your uh, second term along here, because it's an imaginary number, when you square it you're going to end up with something real and so therefore it interacts uh, with the first term that you got out of that binomial expansion. Whereas over here, this imaginary part, it's going to stay separate, um, just like we saw with thirds before. So therefore, I can now say that there's a 2 plus i out the front. 4 plus i squared is by definition 4 plus negative 1. So I just end up with a 3 plus 4i. And now I can expand these again. So I'll do the 2 and then I'll multiply through by i after that. So here comes the 2. I get 6 plus 8i done, and now I'll do multiply through by i, so I get 3i plus 4i squared. Now, you're going to pretty rapidly get to the point where you've done enough of these that you're going to stop writing i squared. You're going to say, I know what i squared is, it's negative 1, and you'll just substitute that in directly, which is kind of two steps at the same time. But particularly these early days, I'd encourage you not to write the i squared, don't get confused or overload your working memory, we can always write more lines to simplify. So at this point I'm going to say, okay, I've got um, this real term here and this which is also going to be real. So 6 plus negative 4 is going to give me 2. Uh, and then of course I've got my remaining imaginary terms which are 11i. Okay, so that was the first way that you can do this. But you can see it was quite laborious because we had to kind of do two steps, two stages of the expansion. Um, can we do this a faster way? And the answer is, of course we can, by using our knowledge of binomial expansions. If you remember these, think back to Pascal's triangle. So if, for example, I go directly 
from two plus i cubed, right? What can I do here? Just draw a line across, separate some of this working. Oh, did that really messily so it didn't recognize. That's better. So what I can do here is I can say that the coefficients of the expansion of this thing, there's going to be four coefficients since the thing is being cubed and they're going to go from that line of Pascal's triangle, the binomial uh, coefficients 1, 3, 3, 1 for this row um, and you know for those of you who need to remember it that's uh, how we form that particular row, right? So 1, 3, 3 and 1 are going to be my binomial coefficients and then I'm going to have uh, the 2's and the I's uh, going down and going up uh, in order of power. So let me show you how that works. First I'm going to have one lot of 2 cubed. So here is the first binomial coefficient, there's the 1. Then I'm going to have three lots of and the 2's climb down while the I's climb up. So there's my second term. Um, there's my second binomial coefficient, so 1 and then 3. I'm going to have a 3 again. And the 2's keep climbing down in power and the eyes keep climbing up. So you can see um, I didn't have any eyes here at all, now I've got one, now I've got two. And then the last one, here comes the binomial coefficient. There are no more twos left, they've climbed down from three of them to two to one, now there are zero. Um, all that's left is just the eyes. Okay, so now I can start to simplify this and then my real and my imaginary terms will emerge. So to begin with, I've got an eight there. Um, this is gonna be three lots of four i. Then I've got, what have I got here, um, three lots of, now be careful with this, there's a two and then there's an i squared, so that's going to be negative two. And then lastly, I know that in this i cubed, part of that, the i squared, just becomes negative one. So that leaves me with minus i. So far so good. So you can see now I'm going to have an eight plus a negative six. Well, that gives me two, like I saw earlier on, you can see this confirms my answer. And then in the same way, you're going to get 12 i there, minus a single i there, so that gives you the plus 11 i for full confirmation. So you can go either of those routes. You can see one is clearly shorter than the other, but it requires that knowledge of binomial coefficients. All right, now for h, we've got enough space here, yeah I do. For h, you can see um, we've got this raised to the power of 4. So this is 1 minus i to the power of 4. Now in order to do this guy, again I've kind of got the same two methods that I had access to before, um, but because this guy is to the power of 4, it's an even power, um, I can kind of take advantage of the fact that this is really 1 minus i squared and that's being squared again, right? So um, I can do this relatively simply without uh, appealing to binomial coefficients. So I'm going to go ahead and do the inside of these brackets. Here comes my a squared, here comes my b squared, it's, watch out for it, it's going to be uh, negative, oops, I should write my plus, it's going to be negative i squared, but thankfully because of that negative, that, that cancels out. Um, and then I'm going to have my plus 2ab, which in this case is plus 2 lots of 1 times negative i. So that's the 1 minus i all squared, that's being squared 2. So now you can see here, you're like, oh, wait a second, um, this is going to be 1, this minus i squared will become i squared, which is negative 1. So 1, negative 1, those things cancel. That's nice, isn't it? So what I get left with is, whoopsie daisy, what I get left with is uh, 2 times 1 times negative i, so that's minus 2i, and that's just being squared. So what am I going to get from that? The negative 2 squares into 4, and then the i squares into negative 1. So you get negative 4 there. Now, this is a really interesting one, it's part of why I wanted to do this example, because you'll notice something weird. We started with this complex number, and when we multiplied it by itself this particular number of times, we ended up with a result that was just real. Now, we've seen this happen before. If you recall, um, if you just take the imaginary unit, i, and you multiply it by itself uh, four times, you come up with one, and we've already seen this by definition, of course, with negative one, but maybe you didn't expect that a complex number with real and imaginary parts also does this. We're gonna unpack why exactly you end up on just a real result in future lessons, so stay tuned. Okay, uh, let's now move from addition, subtraction, and multiplication, now we're looking at some division. So you can see with these guys, we need to be able to use our conjugates. So I'm gonna start with part E. 
In order to work with this fraction to uh, divide through by 5 plus 2i, I'm going to get rid of the complex denominator um, altogether. I just want to make it real. I'm going to realize the denominator. So I start with the original fraction. And then I'm going to multiply it by an appropriate term on the top and the bottom on the numerator and denominator in order to get rid of that complex denominator, or at least make it real. Uh, we want to use the conjugate 5 minus 2i, like so. And then when I multiply through by this, um, we're going to have something we can simplify out the end. So I've got some space on the right hand side. Let's go this way. I've got uh, minus 11 plus 13. Uh, 3, yeah, no, it was, it was 13, I just wrote down a 3, 13i, there we go, that's at the top, 5 minus 2i is alongside it, and then down the bottom here, I've got difference of squares, right, so I'm going to get 5 squared take away 2i squared, right, but we've seen this before, when we had a look at this the very first time, um, the difference of squares ends up becoming a sum of squares because the square of this imaginary number here ends up with a positive result. So we're going to simplify that shortly. Whilst we get to that, we might as well start to expand what we have on the numerator. So let's have a go one at a time. We'll do the negative 11 first, so I get minus 55 plus 22i. And then I'll do the 13i, so 5 times 13, last I checked, was 65i. And then uh, 13 times minus 2i, so this is minus 26i squared. So far, so good. I will draw a big, long fraction line like so. And what have I got here? This is going to be 25 plus, what do we have on the top here? Uh, sorry, on the bottom, uh, that's going to be, the 2 is going to square into 4, and then the negative is going to cancel with the i squared, so I just get plus 4. All right, now I need to tidy up a little bit. Um, this on the end here, this minus 26 i squared, that of course becomes plus 26. Plus 26, I'm just going to write that there. So if I do uh, minus 55 plus 26, um, I think I'm going to get 20... Nine. It looks like they designed that on purpose when you think about what the numerator is going to be. Uh, 22i plus 65i, that's going to be uh, 87i, like so. And then I'm dividing through by 29. So you can see here, um, even though these numbers all looked weird and random over here, um, this is designed to cancel for us, right? So 29 is going to cancel with 29, leaving us with 1. Um, and 87 um, is one less multiple of uh, 3 than 30, right? Did you catch what I was doing there? So 90i would be 3 lots of 30, but this is uh, 3 lots of 29, which again cancels with the denominator. So I've got plus 3i there. And of course, you can double check that on your calculator. Okay, now when we have a look at f, I'm not going to finish this example, but I am going to start it. Like the only thing that's different here is we need to deal with this numerator before we then multiply um, through by the conjugate. So you can see that 1 plus i all squared is going to leave us with 1, that's the a squared, uh, plus i squared, which is the b squared, right? And then I'm going to add 2ab, which in this case is 2 times 1 times i. So that's going to be divided by 3 minus i. So that there, uh, I can see that my 1 and my i squared are going to cancel. That just leaves me with 2i. How nice of them to give me something neat. And now I'm ready to multiply through by my conjugate. So 3 plus i on 3 plus i, and then I think you can take it from there. Okay, one last one before we do a bit of a bonus question. Uh, this here, we're provided with a couple of complex numbers and Z and W are, are very common designations that sort of signal to you, hey, we're in the complex field here. Um, find in the form X plus I Y, which is the normal way we've been writing complex numbers so far, um, find 2Z plus I W. Well, this, um, to evaluate, we just need to do a substitution first and then we'll simplify as necessary. So what's 2Z? 2z is going to give me 2 times 1 plus 2i, there's 2z, plus iw is going to be i multiplied by 3 take away i. So in some ways this is a question just like that very first one we had a look at, not complicated, you just have to take care with your substitution and now my expansion. Looks to me like I'm going to get 2 plus 4i plus 
3i minus i squared. So as we've seen multiple times before, um, we're gonna get these guys turning into real numbers. That minus i squared along the end is a plus one, so that leaves me with three, and then I'm gonna collect like terms and get 7i here for that final one.